Hey guys, I'm Kelvin Wilcox, the owner at Valpo Products. We're here in Perry, Georgia today with uh, Dr. Roger Scaletti with Alltech. And nice to finally meet nice you, to Doc. Meet you, uh, I've talked with uh, Dr. Roger for uh, several times on the phone pertaining to what we're trying to achieve here at Valpo. Uh, for you guys uh, that know us and that's been following us, we've been going at this for about six years now. And you've heard us tell you time and time again that we are creating and trying our best to create top shelf products for you guys and also for the animal itself. Um, so in the last year we've been, uh, we introduced our new block this past year and um, I wanted to introduce a new product for 2019 that we've been thinking about for quite a while now. But I just didn't want to create this product and it be like everything else on the shelf that you see. So we want to be a little different. So I can go ahead and tell you now that uh, we've got a new 2019 uh, Vapel Thunderstruck Premium Pellet. Uh, it's going to be 100% all uh, organic, and that's what I want Dr. Roger to talk to you about. But also, our blocks, uh, we're going to incorporate organic minerals in it, along with our uh, granular mineral as well. So I wanted Dr. Roger to be here to explain to you guys uh, about the process we're doing, the advantages of organic over inorganic, um, you know, one thing I learned a long time ago is you surround yourself by people who know what you're after. And Dr. Roger is probably the most uh, well-known person in this area. So Dr. Roger, I'll let you have it and tell the people about yourself, please. Great. My name is Roger Scaletti, um, ruminant nutritionist by education, master's and PhD from the University of Kentucky. And I've been with Alltech for 15 years in a technical support role with our organic mineral products, Bioplex and Cellplex. Awesome. And guys, we'll just jump right into it. Um, let's talk about our block. Um, last year, I got with uh, Ridley Block, uh, one of the nation's largest and one of the most productive block companies in America. I had a chance to visit with them, and uh, David Hall is our guy, and uh, Lord knows I bug him enough every day, but and David can contest to this, that we're always trying to find um, better ways to improve our product. And real quick, uh, our block has taken off. We've sold a lot of blocks this year and a lot of success with it. Because blocks, you can get sort of bad reviews, sure. more so because it's one of those products that can and cannot work. But we've had such great success with this block, uh, Roger, and I wanted to improve it when I started talking with you guys about organic minerals. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna incorporate our organic minerals into this block. Guys, we're also gonna do something a little different. Uh, than everybody else. We're also going to create, uh, or not create, but we're going to actually put in our system here in this block a fly and tick uh, control. And uh, one thing we're learning about uh, blue tongue and all these diseases with deer is a lot of it's got to do with fly. So, um, so we're going to have that in our block. We're also going to have it in our pellet as well. But can you tell people, Roger, the difference between inorganic, which is what you see most in products today, yeah compared to this very small handful of companies that does or have, in or have organic product. Right, Calvin. So the organic minerals versus inorganic, it really just revolves around the chemistry of carbon. If a product or an element has carbon with it, it's organic. And if it doesn't have carbon, it's inorganic. So practically speaking, we're looking at organic minerals that are gonna be more digestible, absorbable, and useful to the animal that's consuming it, in this case, deer. But it's real important that you're, you read the tag because the, the list of ingredients is going to tell you what's actually in the product. So if you see a word, say, copper proteinate, that's going to tell you it's organic, whereas something like copper sulfate or copper oxide is inorganic. When you really think about it, organic minerals aren't really that strange because all of the mineral in plants, in browse, anything that a deer might be eating is already organic, whereas inorganic minerals are essentially ground up rock that have worked pretty well for us for a number of years, but we know that the organic form can do some better things in terms of performance for the animal that consumes them. You know, you made a good point. I've learned talking with you guys, and, I, and I've went into a lot of stores to look at tags, right. their labels, and it's amazing to me how we call it tag dressing. Yes, sir. And you got these companies, they'll put on their uh, list of ingredients that long, and it looks very good to a consumer, but when you get down to it, there's not really much there when it comes to actual organic minerals. Right. right. You know, and, um, and that's one thing I want to tell you guys, uh, like in our block, 100% organic copper. 
Copper is one of the main nutrients when it comes to a deer, from what from what I, the studies I've done, and also calcium. But a lot of people don't understand that calcium um, is and phosphorus is the source for antler growth, yeah. but it's got to get the skeletal part of the animal right. first before it. And it might be the second year or the third year, from what I understand. But we start dealing with copper. For example, we can explain to them uh, copper. If if it's 100% uh, inorganic copper, what does that do, and how does it go through the blood system? Well, it's just compared not, to organic. The inorganic form is just not absorbed as well. So then it's not retained by the animal, and it just ends up passing out in their in their manure. So it's, it's just an issue of it's not being used by the animal. Just because it went in their mouth doesn't mean they're digesting it and storing it and utilizing it. And we switch to an organic form, we get a lot better retention of that mineral and it can actually be used in some of the important body processes so the deer is able to reproduce better, to grow better, to have optimum immune function so it's healthier, it can fight off a lot of challenges, and ultimately at the end of the day, be a nice big deer at the end of the program that we're looking for. Exactly, and you know, copper is one of those uh, minerals that people know about, and you hear a lot of talk now about selenium. Yes, sir. And everybody wants to promote that, and people say, oh, it's got selenium in it, but they really don't know what selenium does to an animal. But selenium is, selenium is toxic, uh, and you've got to be careful with that compared to what they browse on, they get selenium, but also what you put in a product. Tell everybody about selenium yeast. So selenium yeast would be just the form of organic selenium. You would feed a yeast culture selenium and then it would incorporate it into different amino acids for us and that's how we make organic selenium. But the real key to that, Calvin, in addition to that organic selenium or cellplex improving the performance, it's also a lot safer. So it's a little bit counterintuitive that something that we're gonna say is more available, more digestible, more absorbable is actually safer. But again, that would go back to the chemical form that the selenium is in, being selenium yeast, amino acids. That's the form that selenium exists in the plants and everything else. The problem here in the Southeast US is that our soils don't have a lot of selenium. Right. So anything growing here is gonna be low or deficient in selenium. Totally agree. And guys, that's one thing um, I wanted to I wanted to try to achieve is we uh, we ain't doing this just to try to sell a product cheap to a store a box store and make a profit uh, you know we do this because we love it we do this because we want to make sure that when you get our products that you know that you're buying a top shelf product and we've always been that way and always will be and uh, dr roger scaletti here uh, he knows what we're talking about when it comes to organic minerals uh, another question uh, doctor um, when it comes to um, we mentioned the bioavailability of, of organic. Can you explain that again, please, if you, well, in more detail? Basically, bioavailability would just be how much of the mineral went into the animal and then stayed versus how much went in and passed right out. Because you could feed a lot depending on of an inorganic mineral, but it doesn't stay in the animal. So really, bioavailability just means how much of that mineral is actually used in a biological process. There's a lot of different ones minerals are involved in, but again, if it's not a digested, absorbed, and retained, it didn't accomplish anything for you or for the deer exactly. or for anything. Do you know, uh, dealing with ruminant animals, like for example, copper, um, what's the percentage on an inorganic mineral that is bypassed out the system? Well, with copper, most of it was gonna be bypassed. So maybe with inorganic copper, only about 4% is absorbed and with organic we're absorbing more like 10 or 12 percent right so it's still low in the big picture but right. we have about double the absorption when you use an organic form right so when people for example look at our um, our blocks or our pellets or our granular mineral and if they uh, to give them an idea because this is something I was looking at last week if we have like if on our pellet for example our our parts per million on the on the tag guys it, if you look at, try to compare it to another tag, they're gonna say, well, they got more uh, copper or phosphorus in theirs. But like Dr. said, Scaletti said, you gotta look at, look at the ingredients, you know, and don't be misled by what you're seeing, but pay attention to the list of ingredients. Do you agree with that? That's very important, right? Because a, a higher number of copper sulfate is not gonna be as good if the a lower total PPM number of say copper proteinate. So you gotta look at not only the number, but read the ingredient list and see what forms the minerals coming in. If you see words like oxide, sulfate, carbonate, in the case of selenium selenite, that tells you that it's inorganic. If you see selenium yeast or proteinate after the mineral, 
that tells you organic. So it's a, you know, it's not just look at the number, it's look at where the mineral is coming from as well. Yeah, and hopefully they abide by the, the laws of that state on what to put on that bag too. Um, that's, a, that's, that's another story. But um, yeah, one thing I learned guys also when I talked to some big deer farms in the country and, and I was discussing them, not so much about the buck, doctor, but also the doe. Yes, sir. When it comes to, because people want to talk about genetics like here in South Georgia. Real quick guys, I think this past weekend we had a buck killed in Southeast Georgia that scored 173 inches, which is probably going to be a county record. Uh, Jeff Foxworthy, who y'all do know, um, he killed a buck that was 180 something inches here in Georgia. Those two deer, I can tell you, I know have, were, were fed 12 months out of the year. So I've got people telling me about genetics. We don't have the genetics. Here's what I learned from talking with people. That doe is as more important as that buck. Just because you've got a bunch of eight, eight point bucks running around the property, don't mean that you're gonna continually have an eight point bucks, okay? It's all about the health of the animal, like the doe, for example. If we can keep, get her milk production up, if we can get her, keep her healthy throughout the year, she's gonna produce some healthy, some healthy fawns. And those fawns can turn into bigger than an eight point. Because what I've learned from talking with these people is it's, it, that's the key to growing a big deer is the doe, not so much the buck, because she is the uh, nucleus of producing that, that fawn. Um, and I'm assuming that's just true in about every room in it, correct? Right, right, and we've done a lot of interesting things on the research side, kind of backing up your supplementation, starting before you even breed the animal, or before breeding season starts, to have effects on that animal when it's in uterus or in gestation, and then when it's born, so we can really have a lot of validation for your, your idea, Calvin, of, of supplementing year-round to have advantages of every stage of the reproductive lifestyle. Of reproductive lifestyle, you know, pre-breeding, during the breeding season, then or a fawn is uh, developing, and once it's born, so you can make a lot of justification that year-round is is by far the the best way to go. Yeah. So guys, this is for you, for you guys that feed year-round, for you guys that's got deer farms for you guys that have plantations, that even guys like me that's got some acres that feed you around. If you want to grow animals, don't wait until August or September and then, then throw out some corn, okay? And don't just plant some food plots with some oaks and, and whatever, but um, you're gonna have to start this program in January and it's gonna have to follow through. It's gonna cost you some money, but to, to achieve your goal to grow an animal like what we've seen killed this past couple of weeks, that's what you're going to have to do. You can't expect to grow a 160 or 150 inch buck here in Georgia or anywhere for that matter without feet getting in the proper nutrition. Um, so real quick, uh, the blocks that y'all guys have been buying now, keep in mind, we've added uh, tick and fly control in our blocks, which is, I don't know if anybody's ever done that. We've also added our organic minerals to our block, our pellets, we are uh, 20 protein, uh, 10 fat, 18 fiber, 100% all organic uh, minerals in our pellet with the tick and fly control. Our granular mineral, and by the way, let me back up. We ain't got our packaging yet for this, guys. That's why you see it here. Um, but our packaging will be here come January, as well as our new packaging for our, our granular mineral, which we've, we've had since 2013. But we've got organic minerals in our granular mineral. So right now when it comes to feeding them um, and you want to grow animals, these are the three products that I can guarantee you if you want to see growth on an animal. Like we had, a, uh, real quick, Kevin Gorney's a buddy of mine just killed another deer. I just came to my mind. He was feeding the block and our mineral uh, since January and that deer grew right at 35 inches this year and he shot him. So um, we know we can grow 30 inches the 35 inches a year. That's just been proven. So, um, but Dr. Roger, any other thing you can add to this? No, I think Calvin is just about paying attention to the form of mineral as people are comparing products or looking at products on the shelf. The number of the concentration of the mineral is only part of the story, but I encourage everybody to read the ingredient list and see if you're getting proteinate form of mineral or are you getting the inorganic oxide sulfate and then make your buying decision based on the number, but more importantly, what went into that ingredient list to how the, the manufacturer made the product. Yeah, because when I look at those products that has the organics in it, I feel like in my mind those people 
are a lot like me. They want to see a product do something to the animal, not just to sell it, right. not just to sell them point or tag dress them. We want, to, we want to, all of us want to see animals grow. We want to shoot a big buck. And um, in order for that to happen, you got to feed a deer the right nutrition. So uh, forget the genetics. If you live down in Ludowice, Georgia, where the biggest deer you've got is 100 inches, you feed that deer the right nutrition, you can grow that deer, I promise you. So uh, thank you again, oh, Doc. Thank you. Nice Kevin. to finally meet you. And uh, guys, thank you all, and God bless. Safe hunting.